we talk about Christian, being a Christian, um, Christianity is not a registered trademark whereby uh, anyone can claim to be a Christian. Uh, you know, it's not something that you go and uh, you, you buy somewhere or is uh, somewhere you go and register. No, Christianity is not like that. And uh, most often, many times, people will pretend to be Christians, but uh, they are not really Christians, okay? And uh, you'll see them do all sorts of kind of things and they'll still say, you know, I'm a Christian, but uh, I'm this and this and this. I'm Christian, but I do my things my own way. And uh, that's why you see people have the same Bible, use the same Bible, but uh, they differ so much when it comes to character, okay? And uh, you may ask yourself, how comes this person is also a Christian, but they are not behaving like a Christian, okay? Have you seen some people like that? And you ask, is this really a biblical thing? Are these people really Christians as they mean? Now, you see the Bible tells us that uh, we have to carry our cross and follow Christ. Now, what does it mean carrying our cross? It is basically forfeiting our lives and forfeiting everything else that we have and follow Christ. You know, don't think about your employment. Don't think about your loneliness. Don't think about uh, your sickness, your expressions, and so forth. So many things. Don't think about all these things. Pick up your cross and follow Christ. Remember when Jesus was sending his disciples, he told them, um, go and preach. And don't even carry a bag. Don't even carry money. I'm going to provide for you ahead. Do people do that today? Are people really carrying their cross or are they carrying uh, partly their cross and partly their life? And at the, uh, Jesus said, whosoever puts uh, the plow on the farm and looks back is not fit for the work of Christ. Now, let me show you here what the Bible says. In Luke 14, 27, it says, And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You can't be a follower of Christ. A disciple is a, a follower of Christ. You can't be if you do not bear your cross. You don't carry your cross and come after Christ. For which of you, intending to build a tower or a house, seated not down first and counted the cost, whether you have sufficient to finish it? In simple translation, who starts building a house without first calculating the materials which will be needed? and different things which will be needed before you start. Lest happily after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish all that belongs to it, begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Are you that kind of Christian who begins the journey of, of Christianity, but you're not even sure what you're getting into? You see, salvation is a change of mind. It's something that you have to understand and change your mind. It's not a button that you go and press. It's not a button that you go and press. It's something that you have to realize from today on, I have to follow Christ. And that's why when you talk about the two types of Christians, the, in my other video I talked about a carnal Christian. He's somebody who just gets saved, but... Uh, he cannot be able to buy, carry the cross. He doesn't want to do that. He just wants to sit down and do, you know, carnal things and continue living like, uh, like uh, he used to live before he got saved. But if you're a true Christian, you will carry your cross and follow Christ, okay? Now, when you look at these uh, spiritual Christians, they have, uh, they have some characters that uh, if you check very well, these characters are very unique about spiritual Christians. Now, these people, they are always very busy uh, being Christians and they don't have time to brag about it. True Christians, they are busy carrying the cross and they don't have time to look back and say, okay, who is behind me or who is seeing me carrying the cross? They don't have that time. They shy away from the spotlight. That's one character of a, a true Christian, spiritual Christian. They rarely complain even when persecuted. 
You know, they, they always find an opportunity to suffer for Christ. That's, that's true Christianity. Remember Peter. Remember Paul. Sometimes they could be, you know, beaten up and locked up and, uh, you know, so much done to them. And they always came out rejoicing because God gave them an opportunity to suffer for Christ. Can you suffer and you still enjoy and rejoice and tell God, thank you for all what happened for me? You see, true Christians, spiritual Christians, they always look for ways to serve God. To carry the cross. What way can I show the people and tell the people the truth so that they can be saved? Now, the true characteristics of these uh, uh, Christians, the spiritual Christians, are found in the book of Galatians. Galatians um, 5.22. Let me show you the kind of characters which you will find. Of a spiritual Christian not a carnal Christian a carnal Christian still is going to heaven yes but he doesn't possess these things he's still uh, messing around he's still a baby but a spiritual Christian will have this kind of fruits the Bible says but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace long-suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance Against such, there is no law. Okay? If you have this, you don't have to follow the law. Because you already have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You have everything. You live like the way Christ lived. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. Now, if you're a true Christian, you're going to carry your cross. And you're going to have these fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you see somebody saying that is a, is a, is a, is a true, uh, spiritual, mature Christian, and they don't have the fruits of the Holy Spirit, then they are not... They are still baby Christians, carnal Christians, if that is they are saved. If they are not saved, they are still out there, out in the world, if they don't possess these things. And of course, you can be a baby forever. You can be an, a baby forever. And the lifestyle of these spiritual Christians, their lifestyle is found in Matthew 6. Let me show you their lifestyle, okay? If you have this kind of lifestyle then you're a spiritual Christian, okay? Let me show you the lifestyle of this kind of people. The Bible says, take heed that you do, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. As you do your things, don't do it for men, do it for God. That's the character of a spiritual Christian. Therefore, when thou does thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. If you do it for men, you have your reward already. But when you do alms, alms are good deeds, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. This is a character. The lifestyle of a spiritual Christian. That thine arms may be in secret. That thy father which sees in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Your father in heaven will reward you openly. And when you pray, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. That they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see the character of spiritual Christians? They don't do things for the public. But thou, when thou pray, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray unto the Father which is in, which in secret. Thy Father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be hard for their much speaking. This is well explained with the Catholics. 
They repeat, repeat ten our fathers, uh, five Hail Marys, this and this, six times, ten times. You know, those are vain repetitions and God is not after repetitions. He says, come, let us reason together. He doesn't want repetition. He's not a robot. God is a loving father. He has feelings. He has emotions. He has a mind. He has a heart. He can be able to hear and feel and think. Be, ye, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what thing you have need. Before you ask him, before you ask, before you pray, he already knows what you need. After this manner before, um, this manner therefore pray ye, our Father which is in heaven, Allah be thy name, the kingdom come, the will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men, in their sins or trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Of course, this one is talking about a different time frame. But it also gives us a picture, even in our dispensation, concerning how we should live. And of course, there is a lot of information if you're fasting, how you should fast, you know, lay up yourself treasures upon uh, in heaven, not here on earth where moth and lust will corrupt. You see, this is the character. This is the character of a spiritual Christian. If it's your eye, you know, make sure that what you see, what you're doing is glorifying God. You can't serve two masters. You have to hate one and love the other. If you're anxious, don't be anxious about what you're going to eat or wear and things like that. No, God will provide for you. This is the lifestyle of a spiritual Christian. And I don't want have much time to read all this. Please, you can take time. Just go and read uh, Matthew chapter 6. It will give you an example of who, how a spiritual Christian looks like his lifestyle. Are you carrying your cross? Now, when you talk about a, a spiritual Christian, one thing that they possess is love. Love is one of the major things that a spiritual Christian possesses. Why do we love as Christians? We love because Jesus loved us first. He loved us and he gave us an example of how love should be. You should love your neighbor and love others, even to be in a position to die for them. You see, you should be treating your neighbor as a long lost best friend, even if you have never met them before. That is how Jesus did. While we were still sinners, he loved us. You know, you should point people to the light. Point them and tell them, this is godly love. Let's focus and let's walk towards the light. Another thing that if you're a true spiritual Christian you must have is piety, okay? Piety is uh, basically doing the, you know, the Christian rituals. Christian rituals are what? You should at least be going to church or listening to the word of God. You know, you can be a Christian and you don't read the Bible, you don't listen to the word of God, you don't uh, mix with other brethren. It's not basically a show or a competition of how good I am and how much I go to church. No. Be the kind of behind the scenes kind of a person. With piety, you know, you're going to church, you're, you're doing good, you're uh, meeting with other brethren. That's, that's definitely showing that you're a spiritual Christian. You have piety, okay? Now, something else is that uh, you must have peace. Peace, peace is also a sign of someone who is a spiritual Christian. Do you have peace when the world is in turmoil and people are running up and down? Are you at peace with yourself? Are you at peace with others? Are you at peace with situations which are happening? When the world is striving to be at peace, 
Do you have peace yourself? Can you sit down and put all your trust in God and you be peaceful? Peace is really, really important. And also don't forget, there's something called joy. Joy is not happiness. You know, there's a big difference between joy and happiness. Happiness is just from the face. Laughing around. Of course, I could not uh, find another better picture to show you, but I've just shown you this, to show you joy. Joy comes from the inside. You have joy from within, from inside you, but happiness is from the face. You can look happy, but you have no joy. Now, joy means you're generally content with your life. You're generally content. You're happy. You're happy about your life and everything. It's coming from within. The joy brings out happiness. True happiness comes with, the, with, the, with joy. You know, joy brings out the happiness. But happiness does not produce joy. No, joy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you have joy, you may even find yourself referring to something fatal as God's plan. And you quickly recover. You don't keep things and uh, you keep on worrying and worrying and uh, asking yourself, what will happen of me? No. You have some quiet confidence within you. Some quiet confidence. That's a characteristic of a spiritual Christian. Some quiet confidence and optimism. Optim optimism. And you never carry grudges. You're quick to forgive. And such like. Another character of a spiritual Christian is that they are patient. Okay? You're patient. They are very patient with people, especially on uh, matters of spirituality. Sometimes you may be preaching to someone and it, it doesn't seem to understand, it doesn't seem to hear, but you're patient with them. Because you have confidence in the Holy Spirit's ability to transform that person. You have confidence. You know the Holy Spirit is slowly transforming that person. So you're patient and you're saying, God, I know you're going to do good thing to this person. You're going to go do a good thing to my life. I may not see the whole stairs, but I know I'm patient because I know you're true. You see, people who are spiritual, they see sinners as beginners on a long journey of transformation. When they look at sinners... They, they see them as, as people who are on a journey of transformation. They are patient with them. The journey to some may be long. To others, it may be short. To others, you know, they might get lost along the way. But one day, they will arrive at their destination. So be patient if you're a true, mature, spiritual Christian. Something else that you have to understand. If you're a true, spiritual Christian... You have to have kindness to other people. Are you kind? Are you kind? You see, a spiritual Christian will uh, be kind. And they will never leave you at the side of the road. They will never leave you whenever they know you need some help. They will always be there for you. They will stand with you whenever you're in need, whenever you're in trouble. They are kind. If you're not a kind person, ask yourself, am I really a spiritual Christian? Or am I a carnal Christian? Or am I not, probably even not even a Christian? They are kind. They know the Bible is true and contains all knowledge, but they don't, uh, you, you know, but they, they don't have all the knowledge, you know. Kind, kind people, they know that the Bible has all the answers, but I don't have all the answers. But I'm kind to the poor. I'm doing this, even if I'm doing it with my last penny. I know God has said he'll provide for me. He will do it for me. So they know God has every answer to every situation. And they love their brethren. They are kind to them. They are kind to others. They are kind in all situations because they trust in God. Another thing is that uh, they are generous. You know, generosity does not mean that someone, the person you're giving is poor. No. It means they love to give. If you don't love to give, ask yourself, am I a spiritual Christian? They love to give. 
They give all the time because the Bible says, you know, give and shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. They love to give. And they love to give without wanting to receive in return. They will find someone who is in need and they give him. They found someone who is not even in need. But, uh, you know, brother, sister, have this. They don't hold their things to themselves only. They know that we are, we are, we are a group, we are a community of, uh, of people of God. And they give to the believers and to the non-believers. And they always give your needs a higher priority than their needs. Your needs, they give them a higher priority than even their needs. They will rather shiver than see you without a court. They look out for you and trust God to look after them. They look out to you. Even when uh, you, you think about them in churches and uh, different places, they, they love giving even to the church. They give to the church a lot, to different ministries, wherever they are. And they say, I'm doing this for the sake of God. I'm doing this for the sake of, you know, brethren who are out there. They are laboring for Christ. This is my way of helping them to be able to reach out other people. They love giving. They love giving offerings. They love giving to others. They love giving to projects. They love giving to... You know, that's a characteristic of a spiritual Christian. Be a giver. And don't postpone and say, I'll give tomorrow. No, be a giver today. Another character of them is faithfulness. They are really so faithful. Why? Because the one who called them is faithful. Jesus who called them is faithful. And they know I have to possess the character of the one who called me. Have to be faithful as well. Now, spiritual Christians will never let you down, even if you have done bad things to them. They will never let you down. They will never let you down. Even if you have said bad things about them, they will always stand with you because they are faithful. They are faithful. Faithful. And not only just being faithful to themselves, it's because they are faithful to Jesus. They know what I'm doing. I'm not doing it for myself. I'm doing it because I am faithful to Christ. They are faithful to Christ and also faithful to man. They obey even when they can't see the whole stairs. Sometimes God can be showing you a part of the stairs. But you obey and obey and obey even if you can't see the end. Think about Joseph and his, 12, uh, his, his brothers, 11 brothers. When Joseph was given a dream and he saw some great promises out there, and he was seeing himself, he's been thrown in a pit, he's been sold as a slave, and he's wondering now, what will happen of me? God has given me a great promise, but here I am, I've been sold as a slave. But he trusted God. He was faithful, even if, even if he could not see the whole stairs. He was still faithful. That, that's a characteristic of a spiritual Christian. Something else is that they have gentleness. Okay? Are you gentle? Are you gentle with others? Gentleness? You see, a spiritual Christian knows that God is in control of all things, no matter how they appear. No matter the situation, no matter what is happening in the world, they know that God is in control. And they are gentle. They are gentle. And even to other people, they quickly apologize when they wrong you. When they do something wrong to you, they always apologize. They like to make, you know, friendship. They like to be true to others. They are gentle. They are also very simple and approachable. Do you know some people who are always really so approachable? And other people, you ask yourself, why is this person not even approachable? Have you ever gone to a church, you can't even approach the pastor? So many bodyguards and so many protocols. That, that's not a, a characteristic of a, a spiritual Christian. Gentleness means they are very simple. They are approachable even by the by the low level kind of people. You're gentle. If you're gentle, 
Come on. If you're gentle, then that's a sign that you're a spiritual Christian. Let me show you something else here. Spiritual Christians have self-control. They have self-control. They know how to control their emotions. They don't fight other people. They don't do wrong to other people. They, are gent they have self-control. They, they have long-suffering. Self-control. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. If it's, for example, they are fasting, they will control their stomach. They will control their stomach. They will not say, oh, I can't eat now. No, I have to eat. There's no way I can fast for a day. That's why God brought in fasting. That's why God brought in trials and tribulations. Because he wanted people to have long-suffering, you know, self-control. That's a virtue. You must have self-control within yourself. You have to be disciplined from the inside if you're a true spiritual Christian. Discipline from the inside, not from the outside. When somebody goes to you, they know they can rely on you. You're not corrupt. You're not evil. You have the confidence, you have the determination, you're calm, you have the balance, you have the willpower. You have self-control from within. And if someone is rude to you, you can keep calm and relax and control yourself. That's exactly what Jesus did when they were crucifying him and spitting on him. And he had self-control. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you have that? Another thing that you should have as a spiritual Christian is you should have the ability to forgive. Forgive. Why? Because Christ forgave you also. You are forgiven while you are still sinners. Christ forgave you. So you should also forgive others. I know many a times when people do wrong things to us and, and we feel, what's really happening with this person? Why did he have to do this to me? As a true, mature, spiritual Christian, forgive those people. Forgive and forget. That's a virtue of a spiritual Christian. They forgive and they forget. They don't keep grudges. They don't count the number of times they have forgiven you. They don't worry even if you will do it again. They forgive you. They forgive you and lay it all up unto God. They tell God, I've forgiven this person because you forgave me first. They lay everything to God and say, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Something else is that they have love. This love which overpowers everything. Love is the one which controls all these other things that we've seen. If you have love, and that's why Jesus said that the whole completion, the whole commandment is love your God with all your soul, your heart, and you know everything that you have. And also love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love is the completion of all the laws. Is the completion of all the gifts. If you love others and you love God, then all these things will also happen. If you have love, you will forgive. If you have love, you will have self-control. If you have love, you will be gentle. If you have love, you will be faithful. If you have love, you will be generous, kind, patient, joy, your love, peace, you know, and all that. Love is everything. It conquers everything. So, a spiritual Christian bases all things on love. Love controls their peace, their joy, their patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, you know, forgiveness, and everything. Because they love. Love is above all. It's above everything. Are you a spiritual Christian? Are you a spiritual Christian or are you a carnal Christian? Go and check my other video about uh, uh, the other type of Christian who is a carnal or a baby Christian. And you can be able to know where you stand. And if you're not saved and you're still wondering what are all these, these things, they come because we have the Holy Spirit in us who is sealed inside us. And how can you have the Holy Spirit in you? If you believe the gospel. 
What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it explains how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He did this for us. And if you believe that Jesus did all this for you and you accept it, then my friends, my sisters, you will have the Holy Spirit sealed inside you. And you will have all these gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you'll become a true Christian. You'll start from being a baby Christian. And as you read the word of God, as you continue, you'll start now having all these other gifts. Because they all come when you study to show thyself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, Ephesians 2.15. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you have uh, understood something, please give this a video a thumbs up. And also you can uh, as well share the video, let other people be able to understand. And also you can subscribe to the channel because I always post new videos every day so that we can be edified as Christians. God bless you and have a blessed time.